Akshya. So today let's learn our class 6 NCRT Science. Our lesson name is Getting to Know Plants. So getting to know about our plants. So go outside and observe all the plants around you. Right? So you might have seen some plants which are really smaller than you. Some plants may be uh, equal to your size your height and some plants may be really taller than you right different plants or uh, the leaves which are there differ from different plants so the leaves of every plant every plant is different and you have the flowers so the flowers also different some of the flowers may be in you know uh, pink in color and some of the flowers may be white in color you can see the white in color and some of the, some flowers may be um, you know, a red in color, etc, etc. Now, in this lesson, let's learn about some plants and some flowers. So, let's get started, my dear friends. I'm Lakshya. So, first of all, you have, let's learn about herbs, shrubs and trees. So, first of all, what are herbs? So herbs are the plants with uh, the very thick, so these herbs which are there, they have very thick and tender stem. So the plants with thick and tender stem are called as herbs. Okay? Thick and stem are very, stems are tender. So you have tender stem and the thick stem is called as herbs. So herbs are basically they were shorter. And the next one you have is herbs. We learned about herbs and now let's learn about shrubs. So how shrubs? What are shrubs? These shrubs, the stem which is there, it comes from the base of the shrub. Okay. So the stem is Really, the stem is very hard, but it, it, it is not much thicker, okay? The stem is very hard in the case of the shrub. You have the hardest shrub. And next, you have the tree. We all know what is tree. So, tree is the most familiar word that we use. So, the tree is you have a big you know when um, the the tree the stem of the tree is in brown in color and it is very thick and very hard and the stem or on the upper part of the stem we have branches which comes out like this so here you have the stem and here you have the roots of the tree right and on the upper part of the stem, you have the branches which comes out. Okay. So for these branches, we have some leaves here. Leaves come branching out. So such type of plants are called as the trees. Understood? So we learned about herbs, shrubs and trees. And now let's learn about creepers and climbers. So what are creepers? So creepers have weak stem. So the stem of the creepers are really very weak that they can't, they can't even climb or stand steady. Okay. So you have pumpkin. So this pumpkin is just creep on the ground it just crawls so because the stem here the stem is very weak so it just crawls on the ground it just creeps on the ground such plants are called as creepers and now let's learn about climbers so what are climbers climbers which are there you have the beans Right, the tree of the bean. They try, the they climbers, they climb up. They, they would like to climb. But they take support of other, 
the plant they want they will stand upright in position but they need support to go up okay the climbers need support to go up so uh, this climber which is there it, it catches some trees which are beside uh, beside them or else it tries to catch some you know wires etc where you often see so these are climbers and creepers so creep creepers they just creep and crawl on the ground and climbers what the climber does it just goes up with the support with support of some plants and now let's learn about the stem okay so what is a stem and how it how it works like right? so here what happens is i i would like to perform an activity in front of your people so here i have a flower and i also have two glasses okay and so i poured uh, i poured some water into glasses and i take i took two, two beakers and added some water i so i take in a white colored flower right at here and what i did is i try to cut the stem of the flower like this so i cut i cut this these both flowers into two pieces two halves as well as and now i kept one part of the stem in one in one glass and the other part in other glass and the glass and here for one one glass i am adding a blue ink in it so it's enough when we add two drops of blue ink right here yeah. now on the other end on the other end i would like to add two drops of the red ink yeah so what happens here is i added the both ends of the blue and the red after when i observe after 2 to 3 hours when i see uh, what happens here is the the blue ink which is there the blue ink let me here so i have a flower like this so what i did i kept these flowers in a beaker so after an hour what happens here is half of the flower you will have the red in color so you have the red color half of the flower you may find the red color so and half of the flower uh, this color here i took a white flower so half of the flower the, the color of the flower becomes or uh, turns into red and here at this end half of the flower turns into black in color why does this happens because the in to this activity you can easily understand that the stems which are there they carry the water uh, to the to the flowers of the plant or else to the leaves of the plants understood so i would like i would also like to perform for perform another activity with you guys so let's say i have a beaker here and what i try is i i would like to keep a, a plant here and this plant has some leaves and i would like to add some water in this so this water i would like to add some blue colored water okay the water uh, is in blue in color so what i does is after i will keep this beaker aside for few hours and when i see you can see the stem when you observe you can see at this region of the stem you can see this stem uh, the stem at this region becomes blue in color uh, because because 
Durstam, which is there, it tries to transport all the water through the other ends of the leaves and the other ends of the flowers. Okay, so to this activity, we get to know about that the the stem which is there, it carries the stem carries the water and the minerals which were absorbed by the roots to all other parts which are presented in the plant. Let me make it clear for you guys. So here I have some roots and here we have a plant. This plant has some leaves in it. Okay. And now what it does is he um inside uh in the soil you can find some minerals which are presented here. So these minerals may uh, so you have carbohydrates and proteins as well which are presented inside the soil. You have good bacteria inside the soil that use it to, that will present in the soil. So what we does is the roots which are there they try to absorb the minerals. They try to absorb all the all the proteins and water which are presented inside the soil. So the roots absorb. The roots, what does the roots do? It absorbs and, uh, and it reaches to the stems. So this stem which is there, it, it tries to, you know this stem which is there, it tries to transport. Okay, it tries to transport the water and the mineral particles to all the leaves. Or to all the leaves as well as to the flowers. So first of all, it tries to uh, it tries to uh, transport all the mineral particles to the leaves because leaves are the food factories of the plants. So inside these stems, we have tube uh, tubes. So you wanna you know you have tubes inside this stem. So these tubes are called as xylem and phloem. So you have xylem and phloem. Xylem, we have two tubes which are called as xylem and phloem. So this stem which is there, this transportation helps in two cases. So first one is to transport minerals as well as the second case you have is to transport the food prepared by leaves to all, the, to all other plants. So this xylem and phloem helps to, helps to pass the minerals and the food to all other parts of the plants which are presented inside it. So, he, so the, the function of the stem is to just transport, transport the minerals and the food particles or minerals and the food which were prepared by the leaves. Okay, so minerals absorbs the roots. And now let's go to the next one we learned about the stem and the next one you have is about the leaf so when we come um, into the leaf you have the leaf i have a leaf here so this leaf has some veins in it what are veins actually actually you can easily see or oh, if your teacher asks to do Amma oh, or some somebody, you make a leaf diagram and what you do is you will do like this and you will somehow make a leaf. Let me make this one. Yeah. You will try to do and you will try to make like this. And you will do like this and You will somehow make like this, right? Leaf, but but when you do, when you make this diagram here at at, at this place, well, um, this is the diagram of the leaf. But what are the lines which are presented inside the leaves? Yeah. So those lines. So here you can see the smaller lines as well as here. You can see the very small lines at this region, right? 
you can see like this very clearly right you can see these lines so these lines are these smaller lines are called as veins these are called as veins and you have the middle one which is really you know which is really tall you can see the middle line here so this middle line is called as midrib midrib okay and you can also see now i have i have a plant here okay i have a i have a leaf here so what i does is let's say this this leaf is attached to this plant and the place where the leaf connects to the stem is called as the petiole so this part this part of the leaf where you see is called as petiole and here in this diagram you can find here so this is called as petiole and the and you also have the green part and the green part you can see here green part right so the green part which is presented on the surface of the leaf is called as lamina the lamina and next you also have you can see some pattern like this um the so here when you observe this leaf not only this leaf when you observe this leaf or else when you try to observe when you try to observe this leaf what you see is this pattern of the leaf is the completely different from this pattern because the sizes are also different in both but each leaf makes its own so the design which is made by leaf is called as leaf venation okay so the design which is made by leaf so the design which is made by leaf is called as is called as leaf leaf venation okay in this leaf venation you have reticulate venation and the palar venation so what is reticulate venation and the palar venation as you can see here very clearly uh, these both are veins we know but this uh, here here you can see this veins so these uh, these web like structures or as this net like structures are called as you know this pattern you, you can see the web like structures or as the net like structures in between the leaf so the web like structure pattern is called as reticulate reticulate venation you can see the reticulate venation so the reticulate venation is you have the structure like net you can see the net like structure here so this type of venation is called as reticulate venation and also you have the second venation is the palar venation you have the palar venation so what happens here is i have wait i have uh i have a banana leaf right at here so let me take a little bit of leaf with the blade me das like this
paper is, you can see the parallel lines right at here. Can you see the parallel lines here? Right? The lines which are parallel like this. You have the straight lines. Or else when you look into the leaf first of all, when you look here, you can see the life which lines which grows parallel like this. The lines are going like this. Right? You can see the parallel lines here and here. The lines go straight. It, it, lo it, it doesn't have a pattern like this. But it has, it has only a parallel line. So this process which you know which goes a venation like you know parallel venation. It is called as parallel venation. It just goes in a straight lines are called as parallel venation. So the leaves have the reticulate venation and you also have the parallel venation. You can mostly see the parallel venation in the banana leaf. Okay. And now you have we learned about the leaf venation. The design made by leaf is called as venation. We learned about reticulate. Reticulate means a web-like structure, so less than it-like structure is called as reticulate like this and you have the parallel venation. This is the parallel venation one. And now let's learn about the transpiration process. So what I did, I, what I need to this activity is I have taken one cover and a small small section of plant okay just i took a stem of plant a little bit a branch i took a branch of plant and what i did is i tied a polythene bag on it and uh, i kept few hours aside here you can see some water droplets which are lying on the um on the cover right can you see some water droplets which are lying on the cover yeah, so you can see some water droplets which are on the cover. So these water droplets or else you know how does this water droplets came into the cover? When I put the cover there is no water droplet but how it came? Yeah, so the process called transpiration, right? So what is the process of transpiration my dear friends? The leaves which are there, these leaves uh, they try to try to release some water uh, water um, like vapor. So what the, what that does is uh, this leaves which are there they release some water uh, into the air through the process called transpiration. Understood? While they were making.